Hey everyone, Jacob Norris here, Pure Polygons with the uh, Sierra Division, and we're looking at the oil rig blueprints today. So I want to do a bit of an overview to kind of show you some of the blueprints that are included in the pack, how to use them, and some of the nice features that come with them. So if you want to start placing them in the level, you can find them in the SD art folder. Under the oil rig project, you'll find blueprints. If we put the AC units fans into the level, this one's a really simple one. You'll notice that not much is happening when I place it in initially, but as long as I have it here in the level, I can adjust the propeller speed and which AC unit it is that is going to be placed. Uh, they all connect together, they're modular bits, so if I hold Alt, drag this off, then I can switch to the different cooler modules and make them connect to each other. So I actually started on the other end. Let me move this back over here. As you place them, you just drag it off to the left and it'll instantly swap to the different cooler models you want. And whenever you play the level, then the fans will be spinning inside of there. So if I just change this to simulate really quickly, it may take a moment. And now that we're simulating, you can see that the fans are all spinning. I can adjust the speed, as I mentioned, uh, in the blueprint already for you. I've included a subtle variation of the speed. So when you play them in the, in the level, you'll notice that each one's spinning at a slightly different speed, too. That's just to make it a bit more interesting when people are going to look at them. So I'll back out of there for now, hit escape, and we can delete these. So that's the blueprint for the AC units fans. Uh, there's just one more actually I'll switch to. So the large module here as well has fans on top and so I've included this in the blueprint so you can swap to that one if you want to. Let's come up top here and I'll show you the crane blueprint as well. So now if we drag and drop the blueprint into the level it's super simple to use. It's not a very complicated or advanced blueprint. Uh, essentially all it is is it's going to allow you to rotate the top of the crane by adjusting the crane rotation here. And then that just rotates the crane around with a nice blueprint for you. You could do this with just rotating the asset on the top, but the nice thing about this is you can just drag and drop this into the level however you want uh, without having to line them up and place them on top of each other. If you want to adjust any of the materials on here, swap them out for anything else. As long as you have the crane blueprint selected, you can open up this blueprint view here on the right to see what's included in it and easily just swap out the different materials directly on this blueprint instance. So just for a quick example, if I select the bottom blueprint here, uh, I can just go ahead and swap out something like this is the tiling walls painted yellow. So if I get a little closer, we can see I've got plenty of different options for the, the walls painted in different colors already included, and you can always create your own. So if we can change it to industrial, um, I can also swap out the crane painted metal for the industrial as well. And then so that just changes the color to the industrial orange right there like that. Uh, same thing for the top, if I just select the blueprint, you can click the top and swap out any materials on there too. For the next blueprint that we have, let me show you the the floodlights here. Alright, so if I just drag and drop this into the level, it comes in as the single floodlight, and you can turn it on and off, just like that. You can swap it out for the double light, so there's actually going to be two lights next to each other. And this is where you'll have more options on the double light to turn on and off both the light number one and the light number two there. Uh, you can also actually slide the lights up and down here. So if I zoom in, you'll see that I can slide this up and down on this post. Uh, and it's actually going to stay bolted in like that right there. So it'll work perfectly on here and then as as I slide it up and down if I want to rotate the angle of the light 
I can also adjust that here too. And it, it's set up, I've, I've maxed out the slider so that they'll stop just before it clips into the geometry. So don't even worry about that. You can just push the sliders as far as you want. And if you decide for whatever reason you want it to clip and you want to get crazy, you can always manually type the number in and it'll rotate past the slider presets I've already set there for you. Uh, and I'll just revert that. And now I can use the slider again and rotate them however I want. So it works for both the right and left lights, light number one and number two. You can adjust the height and the angle and get all kinds of different variations on there. Uh, the color actually works to adjust too. So I can take the color here, swap this out for like a blue if I wanted, or a red or something like that. Uh, and then all of the lights have a volumetrics on them. It's maxed out at 20 on the slider, but you can again take that and manually enter your own value. So I can blast this out to like 5,000 and get some, some cool volumetrics here uh, on this light. If I move it downstairs, we can see it a bit better in the shadow. So there we go. It's a really crazy amount of volumetric fog, so I'll bring this down to a more reasonable number, maybe like we'll do 350. That's kind of cool. Uh, and so that works both on light number one and number two. Again, easy enough to turn the lights on and off, change it to double light, and if you change it to a single light, it will preserve all of those values that you had already. So don't worry about re-entering them. You just swap it back and forth and it'll keep everything there for you. If you want the same color light, of course, you can just copy and paste the hex values to make sure that the both lights are exactly the same and increase the volumetric so it doesn't look strange that one has one kind of fogginess and the other one doesn't. Um, this is just rotating the blueprint so I'm not doing anything fancy here I'm just actually moving it around in the scene. And I believe that's most all the settings you want to try out with that. The Light 1 doesn't have any height options, so when you change that, it's not going to move at all, but it does have the same angle options, and again, I've set those sliders so that it'll stop right where you need them. This BP, this mesh repeater here, this mesh blueprint, uh, this is probably the most interesting one, but it also is going to be a bit of time to cover it because it has so many features to it. So for now, I'm just going to move on to the last two options and come back to that mesh repeater at the end. So if you're looking to check out what features that mesh repeater has, just uh, skip forward in the video. I'll put timestamps down there at the bottom. Let's move on to the sky sphere. So it's a very, very simple sky sphere blueprint. Essentially, it just has a, an HDRI assigned to it. I'll say OK. Uh, so the reason it's in a blueprint is just so that I could properly set up the, the mesh to not have any shadows or not provide any other information onto the scene other than this HDRI in the background. If you'd rather not use our included blueprint for HDRIs, you can always go to the plugins up here and actually type in HDRI and enable this HDRI backdrop and that'll actually give you a really simple way to place HDRIs in your levels too. There's a ton of great sky content and atmosphere and cloud content already on the marketplace though, so I just recommend checking out what's available there. If we come to our, our last blueprint here, uh, this is the splines and cables blueprint. So if I drag this into the level, I've included a few presets already on here for it. I can just drop down between the tape tube preset or the large foil tube preset, uh, medium mesh hose, and you'll see this one is white. That's because I've also included options to change the color overlays on it. So if we bring this up, we can see a bit more information on the right. And you can easily update the color of any of these blueprints. It's just adjusting the material that's on there. If we come through the rest of them, we have a, a medium rubber cable. I'll keep this as kind of like a darker color for now. And if we check out this one, this is a small wire cable. 
So this can be used to attach different things to each other or just kind of hanging or just uh, limp on the ground, however you'd like to place it in your level. And the last one, of course, is small ropes. With this rope here, I can easily just come over to this material here, type in rope, and swap that. We can also actually create custom splines. So if you have your own materials, if you have your own setup for what you'd like to create for a spline, um, you just essentially plug in your materials here, plug in the different tiling pieces that are going to connect, uh, and you can easily create any of your own ones from there. Uh, these are just basically some of the assets I already have, and you can see I'm just randomly swapping them out right now. Not all of them connect with each other, so you just need to find the ones that connect or replace them with your own. So now, in order to use this spline, now that I have this cable here in the level, I'm going to go ahead and make it like a interesting kind of dark color like that for now. I can swap uh, the cap directions if I've placed something in here that needs a different direction cap as one of my custom assets. Uh, and you can just tell it to turn on or off the custom color if you'd like it to just default to whatever material you have in place for the spline. I'm going to leave custom color checked uh, and you can increase or decrease the material tiling also. So now in order to actually place this in the level, I can just grab any of these spline points after I have it selected, hold alt and just drag it and now I'm going to be placing this this rope spline or this uh, hose spline in the level however I want and you can easily just do flips with it or do curves with it and then of course rotate the ends in any way that's going to work best for your scene. So those are really nice and easy to use, really quick and easy to customize, uh, and the only last feature is if you're going to be placing in your own meshes, you'll see the mesh forward axis. You just need to change this depending on which direction the axis of your mesh is facing. You can see it's doing some funny things with my meshes right now, but if we swap this out for, let's try something kind of funny like um kind of kind of random <laughs> oh goodness that's interesting yeah there's there's a lot that you can do with this let me see it with like um maybe the harness on there and we'll keep that at one change the mesh direction to x Oh, I can almost make it kind of like a chain out of this thing. That's kind of fun. I never really thought of trying something like that. Huh. Well, see, you just have to play with it for yourself and insert your own meshes and see what you come up with for using this spline system. That's pretty cool. All right, I think that's enough messing around with these chains for now. I'll let you guys play with this yourself. We'll delete that. Um, just get this out of the level for now. And here's the last blueprint. So the BP mesh repeater that we have. I have it defaulted that when you play it, place it into the level, it's going to be the pipe systems. And so this allows you to place pipes really quickly in the level. Let me turn the snapping on the rotation there. So we'll just snap that to 90. And as we increase the amount of instances that this is going to create, you'll notice that you never see any repetition on the texture here. So if I come up a little bit higher, it actually does a really great job. And you see that you would think that's tiling, but actually, look, if you look here, it's not. So it's it's a different part of the, the mesh. So what I've done is to really quickly include a little bit of rotation. So you can see the rotation amount. If I just adjust my field of view, we can spot this a bit easier as I do it. 
So let me increase the field of view. We'll kind of look down the line of pipes. If I adjust the rotation amount, it's rotating each pipe just slightly as it's being duplicated. So if I set this to zero, now we can see that this is just duplicating all the way across. We see the tiling of the texture on it. And so just a little bit of that rotation helps to offset that and kind of trick people into thinking it's not repeating as often as it is. What I've also included here is again some more presets for you to switch between. So we have the different lengths of the pipes to swap between uh, small, the medium pipes, all the way up to the large pipes. I have also a custom color overlay on here. So I'm just going to pick one of these medium pipes. I kind of like the look of it. And let's bring out our field of view again so we can view this a little bit more normally. All right, so we have this custom color option. If I check that, you'll see that the color mask intensity is currently set to zero. So that means it's not going to use the color mask we've assigned and it's not going to show us any color on here. Uh, we included a color mask so that things like these scratches and the rust and all these details aren't going to be overlaid with blues and you'll get strange like blue rust or something. So if we just increase our color mask intensity up to like a 1 or 1.1, you can mess around with it and find a value that you feel is most natural to you. And after we have that selected, now we can just swap our color to be whatever we'd like. And again, if you'd prefer to use one of the preset colors that we already have, it's easy enough just to uncheck that custom color and see which pipe type I'm using. So I have medium. I'm going to swap out this medium pipe color here for some of the presets. We have a, a blue one. Um, we have a beige rusted one and a, a dark or a red one. Something else to note. So you'll see that right now if I go to place like one of our decals on here, let me just grab a decal. We'll put some some bird poop on there. You'll notice that it doesn't show up. That's because this blueprint is actually using mesh instancing, which helps to optimize the geometry as it's being placed in the level. If you wish to be able to use decals or to be able to vertex paint any of the assets that you use with this mesh repeater with, you just need to check box the option that says allow vertex painting. And you'll see if you hover over it, I've mentioned that this does have a bit more of a performance hit because it's not instancing the meshes, it's actually placing uh, unique versions of each one as it duplicates it down the line. So each one of those is now a unique pipe instead of uh, an instanced one. But if we scale this blueprint a bit, a bit lower, a bit smaller, so we actually can see it in the proper space that we want. Now you'll see that I can place these decals right here on the surface of the pipes. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. If you do try to place a blueprint, you're noticing you're having issues, just make sure that that's gonna be checked. The other really cool function about this mesh repeater blueprint is the position offset function. So you'll see here that when the position offset is set to zero, the blueprint automatically recognizes the object bounds and places the next repeated object directly after the length of the object bounds. So when it's set to zero, it'll just grab that distance automatically, no matter what mesh you put in there. So say we set this to a custom mesh, maybe we change it to one of our walls, like, uh, like one of the four meter walls. Let me grab this guy, four by two. You'll notice it still rotates the wall and it's also not set to the right axis so if I just set the rotation to zero and adjust the axis that it's going to be duplicating that wall on we can now duplicate and repeat walls or any other types of meshes that we want such as beams or pipes or uh, pretty much anything that you have in your asset library can be repeated. If I use the position offset function now, you'll see that it slowly starts to adjust the position and the closeness that each of those assets is placed next to each other. 
you can even put it in the negative so if you want to do like negative 100 or negative 200 I think because this is a 4 by 2 mesh negative 200 is just overlaying it on itself so let me do a negative 400 and that should be exactly um, negative of itself because two meters yeah for yeah you can do the math uh, in any case the mesh repeater works both in the positive and negative position offset so you can adjust how close and how far things are placed like that let's swap it out and i'm actually going to try a couple other meshes here maybe i'll build something really quickly we'll speed through it and you can see what i come up with but before i do that i'm just going to show you the last settings that are a bit important uh, which is the custom material that goes along with the custom mesh so when the custom material slot is empty you'll see that it uses all the materials already applied to the mesh here but if we swap this out for something else so these these walls use the painted beams material so I'll just do a search for painted beams we can swap it for one of these and you'll see it hasn't updated the material on the blueprint I need to use this checkbox that says please use that custom material here uh, so that's right this is painted walls uh, and then you can swap that for any of those if you same as the pipes if you want to swap that for your own custom color overlay just click the custom color overlay option uh, and then you can adjust the mask intensity as we showed you so I make this red then I can increase the color mask intensity and adjust it like that those are the main functions when it comes to using this mesh repeater if I just revert any of these settings it'll return that initial material that's actually assigned to this static mesh and I can uncheck custom material and it'll just revert it to all the defaults so like I mentioned this starts to get really fun when we actually start playing with which meshes we're repeating the rotation amounts uh, and the position offsets of each of those so I'm gonna go ahead and start a, like a just basically a sped up video portion here where I'm gonna play with a different meshes try a different couple things and then you can see the results as as I'm building it So there's kind of like a quick example of some of the funny stuff you can do with it. I don't know exactly what this is. It could be like some sci-fi wall basically with like, I don't know, electrical fencing or a heat sink at the bottom or something. But it's mostly just to show off the concept of like, hey, check this out. I can do all these cool things with this mesh repeater blueprint that maybe I wasn't considering before. Uh, and then if you want to just add a decal on top of that, as I mentioned before, just make sure you check allow vertex painting. And then we can come into our decals, grab some of the, the dirt decal or something, and then it accepts that decal right on top of there. And if you're wondering what these cables are that I placed here, that's just a plug-in that comes with that comes with uh, the Unreal Engine, you just have to enable it essentially. And so there's like a simple decal you can assign to it. Uh, on the left here you'll see Cable Actor, 
if you just come up to your settings, go to plugins, and then look up cable, then you'll see cable component. And when you enable that, you can place these uh, these cables into the scene that actually have like physics and stuff applied to them. So that's pretty sweet. Yeah. So hopefully that was interesting. The mesh repeater is really powerful, and I know I used it in sort of a strange sci-fi way, but it's also really practical that you can use it for placing a lot of your pipes in the scene, which I've actually done myself. Even uh, a lot of the pipes in here are actually using that mesh repeater to place quick ones, long ones down the line, and swap them out for all the different types of pipes that you have in your space. Thanks so much for watching. Really hope you found that interesting. And I really can't wait to see what everyone's going to be creating with all these blueprints and parts and pieces. I think uh, I think once you get a hold of it, you're going to have a lot of fun. And I'm sure there's a lot of things I haven't even considered that you can do with it yet. So I'm pretty excited to see what happens once it's out there in the world. Thanks, everyone.